Hey all, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about 1 million checkboxes, which is really globally synced data with HTMX. And so today I'm releasing 1 million checkboxes and we're gonna talk about kind of what it is and how I built it, why I built it, stuff like that. Okay, so what is it? So 1 million checkboxes is a website that displays 1 million checkboxes. And when you check or uncheck a box, it gets synced to everyone else on the website. And so let me show you what this looks like. So it's available at 1 million checkboxes.xyz. And so I've got it open in both um, browsers. And basically what we can do is we can like start checking over here and it'll sync over here eventually. Um, and, and then we can check over here and it'll sync back over to the other side. And so that's it. You know, everyone on this website can share this, you know, number of checkboxes um, and it's all built with HTMX under the hood. And then, you know, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, um, we see 999K, so we do have 1 million checkboxes here. All right, so that's what it is. Why did I build this? Um, so I previously built 1,000 checkboxes as a proof of concept for building globally distributed data with HTMX. And so if you've seen that before, 1 million checkboxes will look very similar. It's based on basically the same structure. And my inspiration really was the original 1 million checkboxes, which has now been archived. It was online this summer. It was like pretty fun. You know, everyone could like check the box themselves and I wanted to see if I could do this with HTMX and build it quickly and so after 1000 checkboxes I knew I eventually wanted to build 1 million and so this is that. Now how was it built? Um, so I used a similar tech stack to 1000 checkboxes in fact really I just cloned it as a starting point which is why it looks so similar and the stack itself is basically Cloud Seed, which is my project boilerplate for spinning up F Sharp web apps quickly. I love building with F Sharp. I'm like, why do you gotta, you know, set up the d database? You gotta set up like dependency injection. You gotta set up like, you know, the basic API endpoints and stuff. Like why not just build a, a little template that I can just clone and start building on? And so that's why it looks like this. Um, for front end, I'm using server-side rendered HTML with HTMX. And then I'm using draft.view engine as in HTML DSL, a domain specific language. I like DSLs because it gives me some type safety for HTML. So I'm not like, uh, why did I, why is this thing not working? And it's like, I just typed something wrong. Um, for backend, it's F sharp and giraffe. For data, it's just in memory. Um, for multiple reasons, like this data is not hard. It's really just like a bunch of bools. Um, you could even do like ints or bits if you wanted, but I'm just using bools. Um, so it's really not that big, a million is just not that big. So in memory is really fast. I don't have to make it complicated, it's simple. So that's why it's in memory. And then finally for hosting, um, it's in a Docker container running on my VPS managed with Coolify. Um, pretty happy with Coolify so far. Um, and this is one of my projects that I used to like experiment with um, some of its capabilities and stuff like that. And it's worked out pretty well. Now for more on these technologies and how I use them, I've got like a bunch of guides. Basically every time I build a project, I write about what I learned. Um, so we've got like F Sharp and HTMX. We've got um, F Sharp and Giraffe for web APIs. We've got um, hosting Docker containers on VPSs using Coolify as a pass. Um, so if you're interested in any of these, I'll have them linked below. And then last thing to talk about is like, there were a few strategies that I used to manage the bottleneck that is HTMX's HTML payload sizes. Um, usually this isn't a problem, but since I'm constantly polling and you know, there's like a million checkboxes, it can actually quickly blow up to unreasonable bandwidth usage. Um, and then so in a thousand checkboxes, every time we reload the grid, you know, this would cost about five kilobytes. And so like, this is a lot, but it like doesn't pull every second. And then like, if you have a decent connection, five kilobytes really is just fine. Like the bandwidth will be in constant usage, but it's really not that big of a deal. But if you multiply that by a thousand, cause you know, a millions, a thousand, a thousands, then this would be five megabytes per reload, which like is pretty large. And so like probably one browser would be fine, but like, you know, I'd probably get questions on my box of like why I'm sending like dozens of megabytes a second. And so personally, I just think this is pretty unreasonable for like just showing checkboxes. And, and so I needed some strategies to, to get around this. Um, if you're not familiar, like, you know, HTMX, the way it works is it sends HTML. It's basically like a multi-page application. You know, you hit a URL, you get HTML back and HTMX is just like, well, why don't we do that on subsequent requests? Why has it got to be the first request? And so we're sending the full HTML and that's why these payload sizes are big. For most web apps, like this doesn't matter because you only reload like, you know, once every 30 seconds. But for me, when I'm constantly reloading, maybe forever, um, this does add up pretty quick. And so here are 
like four kind of strategies I use to kind of get around this bottleneck. So I'm not sending five megabytes every time you need to, to get the new boxes. And um, the first is improved caching, which allows my backend to do less work. I built like a, my own F sharp simple cache which is allowing me to store like basically the HTML, but really it's in DSL form. So it's a little bit lighter weight and I have an ability to shard by key and stuff. Um, so this is like taking a lot more of the compute off of my, my box and it allows it to return much faster. Um, the next is I split my checkboxes into 1000 by 1000 grids with independent reloads. And this is gonna allow us to reload only parts of the grid. So I'm not having to do the full million checkboxes, which is, you know, five megabytes. Um, the next is grid lazy loads. So it only loads when you need it. You'll notice when you first render the page that I haven't loaded all the boxes because I don't wanna send you five megabytes of data if you don't need it. Um, um, and but then when you look at a part of a grid, it's going to be like, oh, I'm active, I should start reloading myself. And then basically all the other parts of the grid will turn themselves off if they're not visible. And so this is a good way to utilize the independent reloads um, and only send you what you needed, but you also get like the full experience of seeing the checkboxes. Finally, I moved to a VPS with unlimited bandwidth. Currently I'm using Hetzner, but apparently a lot of these VPSs um, allow this, you know, check out cloudcompare.xyz, which I'm building to allow you to compare all these things. Um, and I did this because yes, I really don't get that many visitors here, but this is kind of one of those things, like if it's possible for someone to be a bad actor and get five megabytes for me every like time they want to reload the page, this could quickly turn into one of those bandwidth related runaway cloud cost scenarios. Um, and I've got one linked here, which, you know, it costs the person a hundred thousand dollars. And so I'm just trying to do everything I can to avoid this for my stupid little side project. Now I'm considering making a future post doing a deep dive on some of these strategies. So let me know if you're interested in that or if you're interested in a particular version and, and I'll make one. Um, but for now, I really won't go into too much deeper on any of these. Next. So overall, I've had a good time experimenting with these checkboxes in HTMX. Um, I've gotten a lot of suggestions around doing server-side events to scale further, but honestly, I don't think that's the bottleneck and current scalability and latency isn't much of a concern. So I'm probably going to pass on this. It adds complexity and like a lot of people say it improves latency and scalability, um, but I will be honest, I'm pretty skeptical of this. And so without like a clear win here um, or a reason to do this, I just think it's probably not worth it for now. Um, the next thing I might do is may build another one of these to 1 billion boxes just to do it, but I think that's probably for another time. So we'll just kind of see what happens. And then finally, please go check some boxes. It's at 1 million checkboxes.xyz. It's fun. It's out there. It has no purpose. You know, just go check some boxes. Now, if you like this post, you might also like uh, 1000 checkboxes.xyz, my project page about that and how I built it. You might also be interested in hosting my Docker container on a VPS with Coolify as a pass with GitHub auto deploys, which is basically how I've started setting up uh, all of my side projects on a VPS using Coolify. Um, the docs, like there are documentation out there, but like maybe not the greatest. And so I just kind of documented how I did this as well. So if you're curious, check that out. And then finally, you might be interested in the Hamstack, a simple scalable tech stack for building modern web apps fast and cheap, which is basically my philosophy for how I like building web apps these days um, for small, medium scale. And honestly, really any scale except for hyperscale, because at that point you kind of break, you know, all the best practices and rules. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.